In order to run anything in Docker, you need an image. And when you need an image, you go to the Docker Hub. This is the place where people upload images to run all sorts of things. You can get Linuxes, you can get runtimes, you can get databases, you can even get a Minecraft server that you can download and run. You can even get Microsoft.net. When you go to a repository page on the Docker Hub, you'll see lots of different versions of the same image. And in this case, the one that we want is the 2.0 SDK version of the Microsoft.net image. To get that image onto your machine, use the docker pull command. docker pull microsoft slash dot net colon 2.0.0 dash sdk. Yes, we are using the command line because we're programmers. And also because you can pretty much guarantee that wherever docker is running, there's going to be the command line available. But mainly because we're programmers. And that's what we do. Look, ASCII progress bars. Aren't they glorious? Isn't this what it's supposed to be like? Don't you feel like Dozer in the Matrix? Yeah, okay. And I'm bored now. I'm going to speed this bit up. And the image is downloaded onto my machine. Your mileage may vary. So now we need to run it. Still from the command line, we type docker run minus ti and the name of the image we downloaded. So the ti stands for attach a terminal and run in interactive mode. And now here we are at another command prompt, but it's a different command prompt. It's a Unix system. I know this. Well, it's a Linux system, but close enough. If I do ls minus l, here's the root directory of a Linux system running inside a Docker container on my Windows box. <laughs> Specifically, this is a Linux system with the Microsoft.NET SDK installed on it, which means I can do Microsoft.NET SDK things in here. So I can say .NET new console, and that's going to create a console application using the command line templates, the .NET CLI. And here we can see the files from my .NET application. So I've got my program.cs, and I can run my .NET application. And very slowly, there we go. And so, yes, that's it. So, .NET Core running in a Linux container. Done. Bye. Oh, wait, I promised you ASP.NET Core running in Docker, didn't I? Yeah, OK. So to do that, we're going to need to pull some different images down and actually build our own image with an application in it, unless you want to create an ASP.NET Core application inside a Docker container using Vim, which I'm guessing you probably don't. OK. ASP.NET Core has its own Docker image, and we can get that by saying docker pull Microsoft slash ASP.NET Core colon 2.0.0. That will download the runtime image for the ASP.NET Core framework. And we're going to pull another image down, and this one's called Microsoft slash ASP.NET Core dash build colon 2.0.0. And this image is nearly two gigabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this one up again. It's actually worth taking a second to talk about the difference in size between these two images. So let's take a look at the images on the disk. We can do that with the Docker images command. These are the images I've got on this machine. And you can see here the .NET SDK image. That's 1.63 gigabytes. The ASP.NET Core build image is 1.85 gigabytes. The ASP.NET Core image is only 280 megabytes. So the ASP.NET Core build image has got lots of SDK things. And it's also got Node.js installed inside there in case you want to run Webpack or something as part of your build. ASP.NET Core has just got the files you need to actually run the application, so it's much smaller, which is what you want for an image that you're going to be pushing into production. I've created a demo app just for this video, and if you want to grab that so you can play along, you can go to github.com slash rindlelab slash pilot dash o one dash demo. I'm going to run this application using the Windows.NET Core SDK that I've got installed on this machine. So just .NET run from the command line. And then if I head to that in the browser, it just prints some information about the system it's running on. To get this application running in a Docker container, I need to bake my own image. And to do that, I have to create a Docker file. A Docker file is like a recipe for a Docker image. The first line of any Docker file is the from command. And that tells the Docker engine what image we want to use as a base for our custom image. So we're going to use the Microsoft ASP.NET Core build image. And I'm getting cool IntelliSense there from the Docker plugin for VS Code, by the way. 
and I'm going to specify ASP.NET Core Build 2.0.0. Next I use the work dir command to set the working directory inside the image as I'm building it. I'm going to set that to slash code and if that directory doesn't exist then the docker build process will create it for me automatically. Now we need to copy the files from the current directory on my host machine to the current directory on the docker image. Once we've got the code into the image we can build and publish it so we can run .NET restore and that will restore all the packages down from NuGet and then we can run the .NET publish command and these will run inside the context of a build container so that's going to restore into an image and then this step we're going to do .NET publish dash dash output slash output to tell it where to send it to and we're going to set the configuration flag so we do a release build so if we did a build based on this docker file at this point we would have an image and it would have our application in it and we could technically run it but it would be a two gigabyte image and it would have all our source code in it and that generally not a best plan so we want to get this into a pure runtime image make it much smaller and only have our compiled optimized released code in there so we can do that now thanks to the wonders of something called docker multi-stage build. That might sound complicated and it used to be complicated but now it's as simple as putting a new from line in your docker file and this just starts a new image from a new base. Now we want to copy those files, those released files from our previous image and to do that we need to give it an alias. So I'm just going to nip back up to the top of the file here and add an as build to the end of this line so I can use that as an alias to refer to my build image. Then in my copy command I can just use this dash dash from flag and give that build alias there and copy the files out of the output directory on the build image into the app directory on the runtime image. Next I set the working directory on the runtime image to the slash app directory that I just created with that copy command and finally we set the entry point this is the command that docker is going to run when the container starts up so this is just going to be dot net uh, we've got the runtime dot net command line in this and we're going to say docker demo dot dll which is the assembly that our web application has been built into there we go our first docker file so now we just need to build it so the build process takes our docker file and runs each of those lines each of those steps one by one and for each of those steps it creates a new image layer and it layers that over the image before and over the image before and over the image before and what you end up with is a series of layers which when put together at runtime make your docker container it sounds complicated it really well it is complicated actually but making it happen is really simple so back to the command line and the command this time is docker build and we just need to tell docker what to call the image we're going to build and we do that with a minus t flag so i'm going to say minus t local slash demo that's a namespaced image name and then dot tells docker to build in the current directory on my host machine so here you can see these are all the build commands running through here and you can see that's running the .NET restore inside that container running .NET publish inside another container that's creating another layer over the top of the one before and then we've copied those release files into our new docker image and we've tagged it as local slash demo and we've got a security warning because we're building a docker image from windows against a non-windows docker host which means bad things are going to happen. Actually, no, it doesn't. It's fine. Just ignore it. Okay, if I run Docker Images now, we'll be able to see that image we've just built sitting there on the disk. And if you look, you can see that's 283 megabytes, uh, which is three megabytes bigger than the Microsoft ASP.NET Core image. So I've added three megabytes with my application output. But actually, that image, my local slash demo image, is only sitting on three megabytes of disk. It's layered on top of the Microsoft ASP.NET Core image. Uh, it hasn't repeated it. 
So it's only taking up an extra three megabytes. And that's true when I push this into production as well. Mm -hmm. I've got that base image on there. That's 280 megabytes. If I push that local demo image, I only actually push another three megabytes. And I can have as many applications as I want based on that base image. And they will all share it. So you don't have to repeat that 280 megabytes over and over again, which is one of the really cool things that I love about Docker. If you look just under that local demo image, you can see we've got a weird none image sitting there. And that's actually that intermediate image that we created based on ASP.NET Core build, which is why that one's huge. And if you leave these none images lying around, they will eventually fill up your entire disk. They're only doing a little bit at a time, but you need to clean them up. That's nice and easy. We just use the docker system prune command, and this cleans up dangling images, so things called none, and all images that are not in use by at least one container and various other things. It's a good idea to run Docker system prune every now and then just to make sure your system's not getting cluttered up. So if I run Docker images again, you can see that naughty dangling image has been cleaned up and I've just got my local slash demo image at the top of the list there. Now I can use the docker run command to start a container based on this image. So I'm going to specify the TI flags again here, uh, just so we can see the output from what's running inside the container. And then I use the minus P flag to bind a port on the container to a port on the host PC. In this case, I'm binding port 80, the HTTP port on the container, to port 5080 on the PC. And that just means I'm going to be able to point my Windows browser at that port and it'll be able to browse to the site running inside the docker container because it's not a lot of use having something running inside a docker container if you can't get at it then i just need to give it the name of my image local slash demo and yay there's our application running inside a docker container with warnings all over the place for us to completely ignore and there's our application running in a docker container